Don't worry, friends. If you die on the battlefield today, with the medic Ellie, everything's gonna be just fine. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and relax. So last week we did a build video for the Elementalist talking about condition damage, talking about the new Condi changes under the new specialization system and how we can do like crazy burn damage. Uh, really, really fun, unique playstyle. Obviously it's not better than uh, classic Zerk builds we've got out there. I don't think Condi in any realm for PvE has actually overpowered the uh, standard kind of Zerk builds that are tweaked for the new system, but ultimately it was a very fun build, kind of a different way to play your Elementalist. Well, today I wanted to do another one, um, and this is actually a concept I used to play with a lot in TV. PvP and found a whole ton of fun. Um, I have talked at great length about my time in TPVP playing like very glassy burst elementalists, but there's actually something else I used to play a lot of too, and that's a medic Ellie. Of course, back then when I first started doing it, the idea of medic builds wasn't really a term that we came to know, but because of like the popularity of medic thief specifically, I think some of us will get this idea. What's a medic build? A medic build is not necessarily a healer, but it's someone who will run around and be very, very efficient at reviving. So the main format that you're going to be playing this in is, uh, don't run it in PvE, there's really no place for you to use it here, unless you just want to have a bit of fun, maybe in giant wild bosses, where people actually die. But mostly, this is something fun for TPVP and World vs. World. So, I'm going to talk more about the Wild vs. Wild version, so you've already seen some footage of and there'll be plenty rolling throughout this video. But yeah, the idea is this is an incredibly tanky elementalist who gets in there and will resurrect their friends, either from down state, which is now your only option in PvP, or even fully defeated. Once upon a time in TPvP you could resurrect defeated bodies too, that's not really an option anymore. So why elementalist? Uh, elementalist isn't necessarily going to be better at this than the thief is. Thieves are incredibly powerful with their stealths, and if you run with like a nomad thief, they'll do, uh, they'll pull off some really insane plays. But uh, the elementalist does have a few niches and a few capabilities that the other classes do not. Um, it's actually a very, very tanky class after the update. I've ran with both a fully tanked out Nomad's Warrior and a fully tanked out Elementalist. And because of the Elementalist's ability to, say for example, blink um, and hard invuln, not just like endure pain and then traded stuff, it's actually got a, a lot more damage mitigation and can survive a lot longer. In addition to this, when it comes to specifically with the role of resing bodies, it can do a few things. Now the, the Thief benefit is obvious. It stealths itself constantly. People can't even really see where the Thief is. And uh, also the body too will be stealthed when they're defeated and that's obviously really, really strong. Necromancers too can run kind of medic-y builds now where they teleport bodies around to save them from stomps. What does the Elementalist offer? Well, really, for me, it comes down to two very specific Earth traits. Um, the first of them is Rock Solid. This is grant stability to nearby allies when attuning to Earth. And what this means is, with the new stability change, this is actually fairly easy to strip, especially in World vs. World, but uh, this was really what tipped me off to the concept originally. Because not only can you get easy access to stability, which uh, is long enough to res a body with your incredible res speed, but also, that stability goes out to the bodies too, so there is one specific play that a lot of people can make against medic builds, and that's that you can use things like blowouts on downstate bodies to push them away from their resurrectors if the resurrector themselves is, say, in mist form or obsidian flesh and doing something invulnerable and you can't get them away. Well, the elementalist version of this build has the benefit that you can actually stability the body too, and players can't even counter you that way easily either. They'd need, like, multiple blowouts to get through that stability you're pumping out on the body as you res them. Uh, also is this wonderful trait here, 
Stoneheart. Stoneheart means you as the Elementus cannot be critically hit. This makes you very tanky. This is one of the biggest reasons why Ellie's are tankier than a lot of other players. And because you're going to be in Earth Attunement, um, you're going to get a lot of benefit out of this. It's going to be really, really hard for anyone to get uh, you off of the foe. You can spike yourself up to 20 stacks worth of stability to push through massive Zerg CCs. You're ridiculously tanky. You res at an insane speed. And when you resurrect allies, you proc multiple other beneficial things. Things, like an aura that means you and that player then are reflecting. They'll come back to life at very high health because of your runes we'll talk about very soon. And you can even trade it so that that aura then gives protection further to that player. So out of all the classes, once the Ellie actually manages to get that downstate body up, they come back exceedingly healthy and ready to get straight back in the fight and um, survive a lot longer and hopefully knock off some kills for yourself. So uh, that's the idea of the build. I was playing with this a long time ago, but this uh, stability trait rock solid. This actually used to be a Grandmaster, and slowly it's wormed its way down. I think it deserves to be more than one stack of stability, like two stacks of ability since the change, or at least have increased duration. But hey, this has been a big enough change. The main thing I always used to think, though, about this build when I used to run it was I was just desperate for four more trait points. Just four, that's all I needed, because then I could get the insane tankiness of Earth, I could get the sustain and boons and dodge roll stuff from uh, Arcane, I could get the resurrection stuff from Arcane, and then I could get the crazy Condi cleansing from Water Achievement, plus the additional healing power under the odd system. I just wanted four more trait points, and what did we get this update? Four more trait points. So that's why I started looking at the build again, and it's had some really surprising effects. Uh, I have had situations where, like, that broken engineer build at the moment, the one-shots people with the grenade barrage, does maybe 15% of my health, and then you just laugh as you quickly heal back up, and they cannot do anything to you whatsoever. So let's discuss exactly how we build this thing. Let's look at our gear, first of all. You want Nomad's gear, obviously you don't have to go Ascended, I've gone full, the, the whole hog here, so Liz is currently decked out in full Ascended Nomad's gear, and importantly, the runes she's running are a huge part of the build, these are Mercy runes, so these give you a ton more toughness, you're going to have an insane amount of toughness on this build, and uh, they actually give you further toughness while you're resing, 400 additional toughness while you're resing, you'll resurrect your allies with 30% more health, and this very important one at the bottom here, you revive allied players 20% faster, that's going to stack with one of your traits that also makes you revive faster and means that if you get next to someone very very quickly you can pull off a res exceedingly fast. Now for weapons, I've got, uh, again, Nomad's weapons, um, I've gone with a Sigil of Momentum here. Vitality would be better, but there's no stacking Vitality thing, so we can uh, get a further 125 toughness from this. And then this Sigil here, I've gone with a Sigil of Purity, because Condi Cleanse is absolutely so important. But if you don't want to run this, you can instead run something like a Sigil of Energy. Really, really powerful, but uh, they're just quite expensive on the trading post at the moment. As for Trinkets, it's just pure Nomad stuff, that's all I've got here. And then I Vitality Infused, if you are going to infuse something like this, I'd say go for Vitality because you have tons of toughness anyway if you want more effective health basically vitality is the better thing to go for considering elementalist is at the end of the day a class with very low vitality and very low uh, armor values too despite this it we will be very very tanky uh, looking over at our traits, we'll do Earth first of all. Now, Earth, you're going to get Stone Flesh, which gives you even more toughness while you're in Earth Attunement. So, this is 150 toughness, plus the 400 from Resin People puts you to 550. One of the uh, utility skills you can run as well is a Signet of Earth, which gives you even more toughness. And, because we're running Step to Focus for our weapons, uh, you get further toughness from Rock Barrier, which you're going to want to maintain, but not pop on this build. You do not want to activate that. So, with all of that stuff, all told, this isn't even with the Sigil, we're at 4. 1080 armor value and this is very comparable to what for example my uh, warrior gets when he's in his full nomads gear However, um, the signal of earth isn't always the best move I quite like the signal of earth because it does allow for a really powerful emove as well as tankiness And that can set up spikes for everyone else because you're really not going to do any damage on the, this build The way you're going to be supporting your allies is resing them up CCing targets with the mobs and might stacking the hell out of them That's like the main thing you need to be focusing on because otherwise you're not really doing any damage That's like the way you support Alright, so uh, yeah, we get a whole ton of toughness. For the first slot, you don't really want to take the condition damage uh, trait, but the other two are pretty competitive. Now, you can take Armor of Earth when you get low on health. This is going to have further synergy because it's a cantrip, so it gets a load of cooldowns, it gives you regen, it gives you vigor, and the stability is incredibly important for resing people, as is the protection. See, the Elementalist may have slightly lower, like an 8 tankiness than a warrior, but has an incredible amount of protection. And this protection will reduce incoming damage you, you suffer by like an, an incredible amount. 
amounts. So you can go for this, or you can actually take Elemental Shielding. Now, Elemental Shielding is going to mean that when you res someone, you give them and yourself an aura, and then that aura gives you protection. So that person gets up with a whole ton more health because of Mercy. They got up quicker. They come up with an aura, which was probably making them reflect, and they get protection on top. Damn, that's an awful lot of stuff. It even has further synergy with water magic, which we'll talk about soon. So this is totally an option. At the moment, I'm going with um, Earth's Embrace, though, because it's just so strong and it allows you to have that extra stability. Because CCs will be coming in hard when you're against uh, high numbers of players in World vs. World. For the next slot, again, you can ignore the Condi one, but these two are both very competitive. Now, the, my entire inspiration for the build was Rock Solid. This is the ability to give stab to bodies and yourself whenever you swap into Earth. But uh, you do have another choice. Now, if you're running Rock Solid, you're generally not going to want to be in Earth Achievement until someone dies. So then you can quickly swap into it and give yourself stability. And then because you're not going to be generally in Earth, this trait here, Stone Heart, isn't actually that great. Instead, you might want to take something like, oh, Diamond Skin. So you are immune to conditions while you're above the threshold. And this just means certain builds will just never, ever kill you. But has less benefit, uh, obviously, when you're against large, large numbers of players. So what I've been doing instead is actually taking Geomancer's Training and then Stone Heart. This allows you to camp in Earth an awful lot more, get the benefit of never being able to be crit, and I'll talk about your rotations very soon, and actually get some further benefits. Now, these benefits may not look great on paper, but in practice, they are incredibly strong. One of the main things that gets you caught out is a mobilization. If you want to res someone, your friend just goes down, you need to be stood next to them. If your lightning flashes on cooldown, and that's incredibly important, we'll talk about very soon, um, you're probably going to get a mobbed, and then you're going to struggle. The reduced immobilized duration is incredibly useful, as is the reduced chill duration and cripple. Chill, most importantly though, because it's reducing your cooldowns, and you don't want that. Even better, this trait is also reducing recharge on earth weapon skills, and it's stronger than it's ever been before. This reduces the cooldown by 33%. Why is that so important? Because one of the most powerful skills on the entire build is this bad boy right here, Obsidian Flesh. This makes you invulnerable for 4 seconds. It's a long duration invulnerability, during which time you can do whatever you want. You can start a res, you can be attacking, you can do anything. Beyond just Obsidian Flesh 2, consider that Magnetic Wave is a triple Condi Cleanse, one of your strongest Condi Cleanses outside of your heal as well as a reflect and a blast so it gets incredible benefit from this also um, and so this is really strong and actually dropping that thing's cooldown using this trait is really powerful it's the difference between 50 seconds or just 33 and a half seconds before you can obsidian flesh again so it's really strong and these have a lot more synergy together so basically i'm saying there's two versions you can run rock solid but then probably diamond skin or you can run geomancer's trainer training and stone heart the truth is the stability thing on bodies yeah it's a perk a lot of people aren't smart enough to like banish or blow out bodies anyway so it can kind of be ignored Alright, so that's your Earth achievements. Um, if you are not taking Armor of Earth, I definitely say don't run the Signet of Earth. Instead, run Armor of Earth here. Or you can double both up for a nice spike of 20 stability when you get low on health. You're uncritable, you have 20 stability, you have regen, vigor, you have protection on you, and a whole ton of toughness because you're reviving like over 5,000 armor at that point, I think is what it ends up getting. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not going to go down. Alright, let's have a look at a couple of the other specializations. Arcane next. Arcane's a really important one because it gives us further res speed stuff. So the passes are we get Fury, which we don't care about. Here we get Elemental Attunement for free. Now for a while the build sucked because we had to fight between picking Elemental Attunement or resurrect allies faster. Well now we get this baseline, so we don't have to fight between these anymore. We can get protection when we swap to Earth, so it'd be protection and stability when we swap to Earth. And we can get the further resurrect speeds too. This right here, boon duration is increased, always useful, again for the protection duration and the stability duration, and the achievements recharging faster is also insanely useful. Um, but yeah, we're going to take Arcane Resurrection, the other two really, yes, elemental contingency is kind of nice, it means you get even more protection while you're being hit randomly in Earth Achievement. But the uptime's not so great, it's two and three quarters of a second every ten seconds. Yeah, it's nice, uh, and it's particularly nice with another synergy with elemental shielding, which I'll talk about soon, but uh, really the, the winner here is Arcane Resurrection. If you don't take this, every time you're raising a friend and they are like the last little tick but they manage to get stomped, you're going to kick yourself and you're going to know, oh, I could have brought him to life if I had just used Arcane Resurrection. And that is going to haunt you. So I would recommend using this. Then for the Grandmaster, we don't care about more damage for Boons on us. Don't really care about Elemental Surge either. Most importantly, Evasive Arcana. This gives us tons of sustain because it means in Water Achievement we can dodge roll for massive splash heals. Alright, last specialization here, we're taking water. 
Really, there is no reason to go fire. There is no reason to go air. Air is maybe okay because you can get Tempest Defense, which is another aura. So when you get CC'd, you then start CCing foes around you. You get protection. But uh, ultimately, water is just far, far too strong. Uh, we're getting Soothing Mist. Yay, we get more healing. And don't forget, Nomad's Gear has healing power on it. Great. And I'll talk about uh, the PvP version soon when uh, we won't actually have access to Nomad's Gear. Further, we get Healing Ripple. This uh, gives us another Splash Heal when we go into Water Achievement, which we really need. And other other people can benefit from too and healing done to allies is increased so once we resurrect someone not only can we resurrect them to nearly 100% health if we immediately then swap into water achievement we probably will heal them to 100% health because of healing ripple among everything else as for the traits, I've gone purely at the top. Now, there is cause to perhaps go for other stuff. But here, I've gone for Soothing Ice. We get Regeneration and Frost Aura when someone crits us. So that Frost Aura then would combo with the Elemental Shielding to give us protection when we're hit. And then if we, say, ran Elemental Contingency 2, you would then have protection from Elemental Contingency randomly hitting you. And you would have protection from Elemental Shielding plus Soothing Ice randomly hitting you as you go on. But the Soothing Ice is on a 20 second cooldown. So it's not amazing. But the Frost Aura is even more damage mitigation. 10% even less damage. Which again is going to be stacking with protection. Oh, and before I forget, we also have this Grandmaster Miner in Earth, Geomancer's Defense. We take even less damage, another 10% less damage from foes close to us. So, when all this stuff's up, and it will be up very frequently, mark my words, you are shrugging off an ungodly amount of damage. Uh, so, yeah, this is what I enjoy. Stop, drop, and roll really isn't that great. However,. Burning does now stack intensity. There are some crazy burn builds, like the one I did last week. And being able to dodge around and just shrug that off is pretty nice. And again, the chill. You don't want the chill reducing your obsidian flesh and your mist form cooldowns. So, uh, I mean, it's got maybe some play, but generally I think Soothing Ice is just going to be better for you more frequently. You might be tempted to take Aquamancer's training for the reduced cooldowns in water, but on Scepter Focus... You really don't have too much amazing that's giving you like that crazy sustain. You've got Water Trident, and that will usually be up when you swap back into the tomb anyway. Generally not worth it. Soothing Disruption is just so powerful. You've got Ether Renewal, which is a cantrip. You could be running tri triple cantrips on the bar too. That regeneration all adds up. That vigor all adds up. It's just a very... And the, the reduced cooldowns is just a very, 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 very strong trait. And then lastly, you want Cleansing Water so that you can shrug off conditions. There is an interesting synergy. You can take uh, Powerful Aura. Now what Powerful aura does is when you get an aura on yourself you then share that to everyone around you and look at this trait here the resurrect trait when you revive an ally you and the revived ally gain an aura based on your attunement and imagine that they're giving out protection if you take those three you basically double up on the auras because when you res someone you give them an aura for resing them then you give yourself an aura then you share that aura back to them so you kind of give them like double duration auras or double duration on the protection so, I mean, it's cool, but generally not going to be better than the amount of condition damage you're going to take. And you really, really, really want this to survive. So, there you go. Those are your specializations. Those are the options really in a nutshell. That hopefully will demonstrate why we are so tanky in this footage that you're seeing. The last thing to really talk about is the elite skill. I run Tornado. This makes you very tanky for its duration. It just has synergy with the cantrip trait. Uh, you still can't like res people while in a tornado, which I think is a damn shame. It would really make the build shine if you could. But um, but yeah, it's a bit of stab. It can help you get away. And it's a lot of blinds and CCs for foes, which can actually help you to reset in certain fights. The last thing to really mention is maybe... Earth Shield, if you just like the idea of seeing just insane toughness values, yeah, you can run the Signet, you can run the Earth Shield, you can pop your two on this, and then you can drop an Earth Shield. I don't have any friggin' um, uh, stacks on me right now of my momentum, but we're already at 4,200. Then we can come to our food, and we can pop Karka Toughness, and we can pop Omnon Berry Bread, and we're already at 4,400. And then we can start resing someone, and we'll get even... Yes, all right, you can get very, very high toughness. But ultimately, the quality of life you get from the shield is just not that high. Yeah, it's got another Invuln. But so what? This Unvuln, unlike Obsy Flesh, unlike Mist Form, you cannot be resing people during. And so uh, that kind of sucks a little bit. It does have a bit of protection on here too, but just not, not enough. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of fun to stack insane toughness values. Maybe if there was just ever need in PvE for a raw tank build, then yeah, you might see people run that. But it just, uh, it, it's not the greatest idea in the world. Alright, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about our rotations as well. Um, now, as I say, the main thing you're going to be doing is kind of waiting for people to die. If you're running the Earth Shield, uh, and especially if you're in comms with people, you can synergize bursts with people. You can emob from a very long range, and um, then people can drop their damage down. And having that emob is actually a, a lot of really, really powerful support. But otherwise, what can you do while you're waiting for people to die? Well, you should be helping them might stack. You can do that very easily on Scepter Focus. You Not, not like the absolute highest, especially since we're not running um, Arcane Brilliant. 
sense, but you can do something a little like this. I do have a video on my channel of uh, me teaching you how to mic stack. You'll be able to push out a fair amount of mic to your allies. Obviously, not all of these cooldowns will be available to you while you're fighting for your life, but many of them will be. Your key skills you want to look for are stone barrier, rock barrier, and you don't want to pop this. This just gives you flat increased toughness and you want to leave it. Uh, and I often mistake this. You want to pay attention to your skill 3 in Earth, which is a blind, a long duration blind, that will actually blow through multiple targets. And again, in air too. Now, if your allies are trying to stomp, you have just as much capability of stomping as you do resing here, which is, again, why this is quite good in PvP and why I once considered it as a, as a perhaps viable bunker spec. Uh, you want to make sure you blind down state bodies. So, like, warriors who are down, you blind them before they throw their hammers off. If this is off of cooldown, don't forget you have Evasive Arcana as well, so you can just dodge roll on top of a body. Um, while the, they're down state and again that's another blind so people can secure more stumps uh, another really key skill for you is swirling winds this uh, blocks all projectiles if you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with large numbers of players in world versus world this cuts back on tons of their damage you just make sure people kite around in the swirls for while they're up and this really really helps with a lot of damage mitigation in water you don't care too much if you're trying to chase people down don't forget about freezing gust which is a long-range chill on people the days you can kind of ignore except for the might stacking the water trident those very important for healing up and I'll talk about that in a second lastly you guys might be thinking of gale this is a long-range knockdown it's not that great though a lot of people are packing stability a lot of people pack stun breaks uh, and mobs are way 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 stronger in my opinion and uh, this often won't land and won't be as useful to you uh, as you'd expect all right all that said though it is a CC that can help you to survive for longer as you uh, stop them wailing on you incessantly in, in like the smaller matchups Okay, so the, the main thing I want to talk about is how you're going to kind of play the spec, because it's very different to other uh, experiences in Elementus. Mostly you want to be staying, at least on this trait setup, you want to be staying in Earth Achievement. This keeps your stone heart on you, and results in um, these kinds of situations you can see here, where people just keep hitting you and hitting you and hitting you, they can't do anything. But they are getting you lower, and eventually you're going to have to swap out of Earth Attunement to heal yourself up. Now, you can do that very easily. You don't have that much vitality anyway, and uh, one swap into War Attunement should do the trick, regardless of your heal skill. So what do you do when you get to that point? You're going to swap out, and then you're going to be vulnerable. Those critical hits coming in means a lot more damage coming in. Well, what you want to do is time your Obsidian Flesh. If you're not using it to res people at the moment, you time your Obsidian Flesh for that moment where you need to reset. Now, the goal is to chain as much like hard mitigation as you can while you're in other achievements. So if you pop Obsidian Flesh, then duck into Water Achievement, do your dodge roll for a big heal, drop your water uh, trident, and then swap into, say, air attunement for a swirling winds or more blinds, you can actually cover a lot of the time when you'd be vulnerable. Um, you're actually not taking damage anywhere, and they can't capitalize on the fact you're not out of uh, Earth Attunement. Earth Attunement's going to recharge in just four seconds after that, so half the time you're not in the Attunement, it doesn't matter that they can crit you anyway. And then beyond that, it's just kind of your job to chain those dodge rolls and uh, make sure you're safe. You can even play it a little bit uh, cheekier, where you go Obsidian Flesh, then swap, wait with the dodge roll though until Obsidian Flesh is over, then do your dodge roll to chain it for even longer. Then I'll uh, drop the trident before that and then come in and then like those extra evade frames you're getting while you're invulnerable anyway aren't wasted. So that's kind of the way you play. And if you have no obsidian flesh, do it with mist form. If you have neither of those, try and uh, put a massive gap between you and the foe by lightning flashing far away. This is an incredible utility that I value on par as another invulnerability skill. That huge range you can push yourself away from a foe uh, means the world. It, it really does mean surviving for an awful awful lot longer. Okay, so that's what you want to do to, to survive if you're taking a lot of heat. What about when a, an ally goes down? Well, obviously your utility is incredibly strong there too. And this is one of the reasons why this really shines. Now, Thief can do this as well That when they're playing kind of a medic build. When a player gets downed, um, they can actually be rezzed pretty much immediately. If you press F on someone, the second they go down, you can be rezzing them while they're still falling to the floor. And while they're still falling to the floor, for about like a, a duration of maybe a quarter of a second to half a second, and this really counts, ArenaNet have got a system in the game which makes bodies invulnerable. This is the same thing that cleanses you of all conditions and resets your health. And so during that time, you can actually be rezzing an ally up while enemies aren't really putting any DPS out. And so if you're quick enough to get next to someone with such insane res speed, 30% faster reses, you can pick people up very frequently. But how do you stand next to someone all the time? Most things in Guild Wars 2 are cleaving attacks. That means if you're constantly stood up someone's ass while they're getting DPS that last little point before they die, you're going to take a lot of splash damage yourself, and they're probably going to be able to press you out eventually. So what you want to do is keep your distance and about, oh, I don't know, 900 range worth of distance. Then the second they go down, you can blink on top of them, obviously flesh and press F. 
or misform and press F. And they're very likely to be up. It takes people time to get the poison onto the body. It takes people time to start rolling that damage out. And even against large numbers of players in World vs. World, not just in Conquest, you'll find that most of the time, your friends come back to life. And when they do, they come up very, very strong. Last little thing I want to talk about, guys, is the idea of which achievement you want to res people in. Um, now, Earth Achievement basically has the perk that they'll get a magnetic aura on them, uh, which means that they're going to be reflecting projectiles. Water Achievement will put a frost aura on them, or double frost aura if you go for that trait setup, as I expressed before, which will reduce their incoming damage by a further 10%, if you like, which is also very strong. The other benefit, too, of Water Achievement is when you swap to water, you can trait or you can dodge roll onto someone to cleanse stuff off of their body. So mid res, if you take the traits to cleanse conditions on yourself and allies when you swap to water achievement, um, in the middle of the res, while you're resing someone up in vulnerable, you can swap to water and you can get that poison off of the body and get your insane res speeds back. The last little thing I was playing with uh, that was quite fun for a time was actually making one of these sigils a sigil of rage and then training yourself to never attack then while you're resing rotate into air attunement and pop a lightning strike on someone that will give you instant quickness and then you double your res speed again which is really strong often unnecessary though and uh, kind of a difficult play style you'll see that all my auto attacks are unbound um, it's basically because of that it's kind of difficult though especially in long fights you're going to get splash damage out on people while you might stack and they're going to walk in your foot so it's just not totally reliable but very fun if you can pull it off oh yes and before i forget as i totally did i'm saying this in the editing for pvp you cannot run nomads gear nomads gear is amazing it's toughness primary vitality and healing power i would recommend you instead run sentinels in pvp and then give yourself a sigil of life um, with the sigil of life if you can build those stacks up then your healing power will actually be high enough to uh full heal yourself when you splash into water each time you get plenty of sustain and then you still get like that hard rock solid insane toughness and vitality values that you so desire um, and then you'll be able to tank pretty significantly so that's the setup i'm running in pvp but for the world versus world stuff uh, nomads all the way anyway there you go guys that's the medic ellie i hope you've enjoyed the footage i hope you enjoyed the explanation and i guess i will see you uh, maybe next week we'll do another build let me know catch you then guys